Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Inna alhamdulillahi na'muduhu wa nasa'inu wa nasa'firu wa na'unzu billahi min sururi anfusina wa min sayyatina man yadillahu falamudilla wa man yudlillahu falamudilla. Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum. I am honored to stand before you today to address a theme that is not only timely but essential for the fabric of our shared future. Human dignity and rule of law building peaceful and inclusive multi-faith and multicultural societies. Excellences, distinguished delegates, our global community is yearning for courageous and thoughtful leadership with conviction and integrity. Our world is troubled and in crisis enveloped with the rise of religious intolerance, hate, war, conflicts, insecurity, climate crisis, food and health insecurity, widely poverty and inequity, hypocrisy, lack of leadership, responsible, lack of responsible leadership and weakening conscience and lack of empathy in humanity and greed continues to be normalized. The risk of rolling back all the gains that resulted to a better and peaceful global community and dignified humanity is very high. Our moral compass and values as a humanity is increasingly weakened, aggressively confronted, and continuously provoked to worry levels. And in a state of aggressive attempts to shape a narrative, capture and augment the historical, cultural, and traditional gathering that govern and guide our collective humanity. The group picture that seems to reflect the global state's play will not, will not lead to building a peaceful and inclusive multi-faith and multicultural societies that is governed by rule of law human rights, and human dignity. Delegates and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this reality and fast-moving dark clouds propelling changing geopolitics, global instability, and crisis will not spare any continent if not swiftly contained responsibly. It is our collective failure and responsibility to meaningfully resolve with courage and conviction. The international community and multilateralism are the only hope and must take responsibility anchoring the centrality of rule of law human rights, and human dignity for all sooner, sooner than later. The world is a diverse tapestry of beliefs, cultures, and histories. Our regions, Southeast Asia and Africa, are a testament to this diversity. Our unity in diversity is not just a slogan, but a cornerstone 
that has underpinned the peace and security of our regions. It is an acknowledgement that while our faiths may differ and our cultures may diverge, our aspirations for peace, prosperity, and mutual respect are overwhelmingly similar. Our multi-faith cohabitation is a rich dialogue that has been ongoing for centuries. It is the sound of the Muazin blending with the chime of temple bells, the harmony of a church choir complementing the meditative silence of a Buddhist monastery. The symphony of faith is a testament to our ability to not only coexist, but to thrive together. The culture of encounter that Pope Francis encouraged and St. Francis believed is the same kind of practice that our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advocated for nearly 1,400 years ago. This culture is much more than mere talk. It is also much more than a theory. It is necessary an active process that requires human beings to be fearless in the ways that they interact with humanity. May we embrace the culture of encounter by denouncing exclusion and isolation and embracing inclusion and integration. Amen. The question, delegates and participants here, for all of us, is what we all can do as a collective leadership and peoples to ensure the freedom of religion reigns supreme within the borders of our states and beyond, and I mean globally. In this context, the Human Rights Council Resolution 1618 offers a very vital framework. The 1618 Action Plan provides carefully crafted, balanced and holistic human rights-based guidance to states and other relevant stakeholders on how to prevent and respond to manifestations of intolerance, discrimination, hatred, and violence based on religion or belief. It underscores the need for a collaborative and respectful approach to building multi-faith and multicultural societies. This resolution emphasizes open dialogue among diverse religious and cultural groups. The protection of religious sites and symbols and balancing the freedom of expression with the respect for religious beliefs. It calls for legal and administrative measures to safeguard individuals from discrimination and intolerance, and stresses the importance of training for government officials in identifying and addressing these incidents. Furthermore, Resolution 1618 highlights the role of media and technology in promoting respect for religious diversity advocating for responsible use of these platforms. It also underlines international cooperation in fostering a culture of tolerance and peace, as well as the necessity of continuous dialogue and engagement for the implementation of these principles. These aspects of Resolution 1618 align with our commitment to fostering environments where religious diversity is not only respected, but celebrated, and where acts of hatred based on religion or belief are effectively punished. As we reflect on the teachings of our glorious Holy Quran and the prophetic traditions, we emphasize the respect of human dignity and the sanctity of life. It becomes clear 
that these international resolutions and our religious directions converge towards a common goal. The creation of harmonious, inclusive, and respectful societies. In the same vein, as we gather here to discuss the crucial themes of human dignity and human rights and the peaceful coexistence of diverse faith communities, it is enlightening to reflect upon the wisdom imparted by our glorious Holy Quran which equals these universal values. Allow me. Chapter 49, verse 13 of the Holy Quran. And I thought, says, O mankind, we have created you from a male and female, and made you into nations and tribes, that you may know. <coughs> this verse beautifully encapsulates the essence of our shared humanity. It reminds us that our diversity of nations, cultures, and faiths is not a division, but a means to enrich our understanding and to foster a deeper sense of kinship among all people. Further, in Al Isra 1770, it also states, and we have certainly honored the children of Adam and carried them over land and sea and provided for them of the good things and preferred them over much of what we have created with definite preference, unquote. This verse from al Isra illuminates the concept of human dignity from an Islamic perspective. It underscores that all humans, referred to as the children of Adam in the verse, are honored equally, not because of their personal attributes, but simply because they are human. This universal honor, devoid of any discrimination, is the cornerstone of our discussions on human dignity. These Quranic teachings, along with the guidance provided by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during acts of war, emphasize respect for human 